Hi everyone, and welcome to week 12 of Introduction to Causal Inference. The title of this week's lecture is Transfer Learning and Transportability. A bit more specifically, we'll see how a causal perspective can provide important insights for transfer learning. And by transportability, we mean that we're going to see when we can transport causal effects across different populations. So, for example, when we people talk about external validity, when we have an experiment that will be valid for different populations than the population that the experiment specifically happened to, that is one specific instance of transportability. But first we'll see the insights that causality gives us into transfer learning. Here's the general structure of the transfer learning problem. So we have training data in one task, so in one data distribution, that's what this task one is here, and we have samples of that distribution, that's our training data one, and then we use those to learn this model one. And then the transfer part is we have another task, task two, which is a different data distribution, and we want to transfer information between the two tasks. So for task two, we could also have training data from that different distribution, that task two distribution, and then we use that data along with the transferred knowledge or transferred information from task one to learn a model two for task two. And we could even have zero training data for task two and the transfer from task one to task two is all we have for our model two. Additionally, here I've only drawn two tasks, but more general transfer learning could have many tasks. Domain generalization is the specific subset of transfer learning that I mentioned where there's only one model that we learn from the training data in task one, and then we don't have any data in task two, rather for task two, we just test on the task two data. So we're learning a model from task one data that comes from this P train distribution, and then we're testing on data from task two, which we'll call our P test distribution. And in general, these two distributions are not equal, right? So if these two distributions were equal, this would be just regular supervised learning. One common setting where people do domain generalization is in this setting known as covariate shift. Okay, so the domain generalization setting is where this P train distribution is not equal to this P test distribution. And our goal will be to model the conditional expectation of Y given X in the test distribution, only given access to data from the train distribution. In other words, we want to predict y from x in task 2, the test task, when we've only be given x, y pairs from task 1, the training task. The covariate shift assumption is that the two conditional distributions y given x in the training distribution and y given x in the test distribution are the same. That's the covariate shift assumption, but we see here that we're in the setting where these two joint distributions, the train and test, are different joint distributions, so something has to be different, and that's going to be the marginals for the x. The x marginal in the training distribution is not equal to the x marginal in the test distribution. Okay, so how do we use the covariate shift assumption? Well, we have some data. So here I have x on the x-axis and y on the y-axis. These points are x-y pairs. This is data from the training distribution. And then we just fit a curve through there for the conditional expectation of y given x in the training distribution. And remember, our goal is to model that conditional expectation in the test distribution. So the covariate shift assumption up here that these two conditional distributions are the same tells us that for this conditional expectation we're just going to copy over this conditional expectation from the training distribution. And an important thing to notice is that we need that the support of the training x is equal to the support of the test x. So that's x in the training distribution and x in the test distribution have the same support which we visualize by these sets here with this in blue here. In other words, the x's that we need to make predictions on will always fall in that interval in blue there, which is the same in both the train and test distribution. If we don't have that these supports are the same, we're going to need to make some assumptions about extrapolation, kind of like the things that we saw way back when we introduced positivity in week two. 
So say that the support for the test distribution were actually stretched out all the way over here as well. We'd have to make an assumption that we can extrapolate this black curve properly to properly predict over there because we only have data for this black curve in this blue interval because that's where we had training data in the train distribution. We didn't have data over here in the train distribution that we might be interested in for a test distribution where the support is extended all the way out here rather than just in this blue interval. Okay, so that's the covariate shift assumption. We just assume that the conditional distribution of y given x is the same in the train distribution and the test distribution. But this assumption seems maybe a little bit strong and not that attractive because we're just copy and pasting the conditional expectation from the train distribution to the test distribution. 